Hey everyone. All right, so uh, I'm gonna jump on here and give you my game plan for the week ahead. Uh, thank you guys who are tuning in live to this. Appreciate you guys being here. And if you have any questions, um, you know, on stocks we trade last week or for what you're looking at for the week ahead, feel free to post those down below uh, in in chat. I'll I'll see them and I'll I'll answer those questions. So last week, uh, kind of wild. China stocks are back. All right. Well, at least for now. So I want to go over a couple of the big momentum stocks from the last week, because obviously there's something that we need to sort of get dialed in on there. And then I want to look a little bit, a little bit forward at what the plan is for the week ahead. So let's see. Um, so typically, uh, you know, each morning starts pretty much the same as you guys know. Uh, so last week, you know, every morning started the same. I log in uh, to the chat room. So, you know, those of you who are members, you log in the members dashboard at Warrior Trading, you click here to enter, and that pops up the chat rooms. And so you've got the chat rooms, and this is where you have scans and things like that. So you can look at the um, top gappers, which of course it's a weekend, so there's not going to be top gappers today, but you could pull up the scan. So I did that, of course, every day last week, and um, one of the things that I noticed on, I guess it was... Um, uh, what day was it? It was um, Thursday, was that HUDI was moving higher. All right, so Thursday, HUDI, um, I mean, this thing, so this hit a high yesterday of like 200 bucks. All right, so this is a Chinese stock. It's a somewhat recent IPO, uh, and it did make a big move. It's made a couple of big moves. So this is a stock that I've traded a few different times. It has been volatile. It's definitely one that I, I like. And just two weeks ago or a week ago, it made this move here from 30 to 60, came all the way back down. So on Thursday morning, when it was gapping up pre-market to 38, I was like, eh, I don't know. I mean, it's interesting, but I'm not sure if we can really trust it. So on the day before, it had gone from 25 to 34. That was on this day right here. So it, was, it had moved higher. Uh, and then Thursday morning, it had a pre-market high of 38. So we kind of had it on watch list. It was on the gap scan, right? So it was on the gap scan. Let's see. So the way the gap scans look, um, we have the gap scan. Oh, I'm not. I'm on my law, my wrong uh, username. Or right, in any case, um, there's no scans after hours or on Saturday. So the gap scan was showing it was up 38 percent, or or it was at 38 dollars. It was up uh, maybe 10 percent or whatever it was. It closed at um, 31. So you know, 20 percent gap. Floats relatively low. And at the open, it ended up selling off. All right, so I kind of had it on watch. It was on a side chart. And then look at this. At 10 a.m., it pops up to 40. 50,000 shares of volume. It's like, whoa, okay, here we go. Looks like it's going to go. A second later, it's halting down at 27. I was like, wow, this stock is garbage. This is terrible. That is so brutal. Halts down a second time at 23. And I was like, oh, man, here we go. This thing is just going to get hammered. So I called it a day, and I, I didn't trade it. Uh, later in the afternoon, someone says, did you hear Hamang crushed it? And he's one of our students at Warrior who's got a guy's million dollar badge. And I'm like, what do you mean he crushed it? He doesn't really trade to the short side. So what, what did he do? And I refreshed my chart and I saw it was a, went to $70 a share. So, you know, I was like, okay, wow, this thing clearly, um, is on fire. This thing is moving. So, um, so I, I was very interested in it at that point. I didn't end up uh, trading it, but I certainly thought it was interesting. And uh, so it pulls back. It sells off a little bit. This is afternoon stuff. Pops up here again to 67, drops back down to like 53, super choppy. And then into the close, it halts up at 72, gaps higher, halts again at 87. After hours, it opens and squeezes to $155 a share which is probably a short seller getting liquidated because this thing just squeezed hard, big time. I mean, that's such a crazy move. So then Friday morning, yesterday, I was like, okay, it looks like it might be on the backside of the move. That was probably the high. It needs to get back over 120. And as we were coming into the open, it was down here around like, you know, it sold off a bit. At the open, I did take a trade, as you saw, um, jumped in at 88, it halted up at 89.62, it opened higher and went to $104 a share, so I made some money on it yesterday, and then it sells off and halts down. And I was kind of like, okay, let's keep this on watch, because it might do what it did yesterday. 
And in fact, that's exactly what happened. And it went all the way up to almost $200 a share, which was crazy. And it squeezed again into the close here up to 92. I thought it was going to break 200 and do another rip into the close, but it ended up selling off. And after hours, it uh, finished with one last candle here that dropped it down to a low of like 118. So I don't really know um, for sure what to think about this other than this has been a trend this well, it's not even just this year. I mean, this has been a trend that has been going on for a while that we see these really big moves on uh, Chinese stocks, especially recent IPOs. Chinese IPOs this year have been going up an average of 2,200%. So they've been making some really, really monster moves, and it's certainly worth keeping an eye on. So uh, for those of you guys that are in the classes, you can obviously go over to education and view classes in the portal. And there's a section here in uh, my small cap day trading course, uh, which is, um, let's see, I'll just go over here for a second. Uh, oh, my internet connection's a little poor. Um, I'll, let's see if that'll load in a second. So if we go over to, um, let's see. So in the small cap day trading course, which is now called Day Trading Strategies and Scaling, we have uh, breaking news and recent IPOs. This is a class that I teach. And then we've got um, recent IPO breakouts and reverse splits. These have both been really popular this year. And we've also had some really good SPAC uh, breakouts. And what we're having right now is setup seven, the second day continuation. So these are patterns that we've, I mean, you know, I have classes on all this. These are patterns that we've seen again and again and again repeat themselves over awful. the years. None of this Definitely. is new. So when I see these types of patterns forming, like what we've got on um, HUDI, I certainly do get excited. I'm thinking, wow, okay, this has some potential. We could see a bigger move here. So these are um, sections of day trading strategies and scaling, which is uh, formerly my small cap day trading course. So you can see this is the curriculum. So uh, chapter eight right here, um, this is where we get into trading the different uh, intraday patterns like ABCD pattern, half dollar, whole dollar breakout. But then when we get into uh, chapter nine here, this is where we're talking about the specific setup type. And so HUDI meets several of our criteria of being a stock that we would want to watch closely. It's a Chinese stock. We know that China stocks have some especially strong momentum. We're not always sure exactly why, but trade the technicals. And so we've had some really good action on these. It's a somewhat recent IPO. It has a pretty low float. It's second day continuation. And so for a lot of reasons, I think it makes sense um, that it's something that we want to watch. So my thought on this is that um, on Monday, maybe we get a squeeze higher. We'll see how it opens pre-market. And I'm not going to be one of those traders that's sitting here at, you know, 4 a.m. to try to trade early, early pre-market. I'll watch it during my regular trading session, you know, when I'm always trading between, you know, roughly 8 and 11, 8 and 10. And we'll see if it gives us some opportunities there. It's been more of an afternoon momentum stock these last two days. So that might not fit in super well with my kind of routine. You know, one of the things that I usually say is, I know the time when I trade the best. I know when I am most aggressive, when I am able to produce the most profit. And, you know, for what it's worth, I could go back over here um, and show you my um, some of my metrics. So, you know, I'm a trader who's been doing this for a really long time. I've got over $12 million in gross profit that is standing behind the strategy that I trade every single day. That's over 22,000 trades. All right, so I could tell you with a lot of conviction that I trade the best in this window between 7 and 11. And I really try to avoid trading later in the day. It's not that I don't, but it's that I generally don't find that I'm net profitable. So you could see, obviously, my distribution of trades at this point is predominantly uh, early, right? Between 7 and 11. That's when I trade the most because I know that's when I make the most. But I still trade between 12, 1, 2, and 3. But then look at the profit I produce during those times. It's negligible. In fact, it's, in, it's red. And this is over a very long period of time, but it just goes to show that statistically, this isn't the time I'm going to do as well. Also, for what it's worth, statistically, I usually do pretty well towards the end of the year, October, November, December, January, February, right? Now, June was a little bit of an anomaly. I had the best month I've ever had in, in uh, June of 2020, but 
in any case, um, you know, we're coming into a time of year where usually I do pretty well. So my focus is trading the morning, even though you have something like HUDI that ended up making its move more, uh, you know, in the afternoon, that to me feels a little bit, um, you know, by itself, like it's kind of, it's just not typical that that's when we would see these big moves. Usually we would see them uh, earlier in the day. So if it just happens to be continuing at that time. And also for what's worth, I've made the most money on stocks generally under 20 bucks. So, and this is millions of dollars. So when we start to get into the higher price range, you know, 50 to 100, I'm not saying I haven't made money there. That's a quarter million dollars. That's half a million between 100 and 200. And a lot of that was probably GameStop and a couple others. But, and I'll say as always, for those just tuning in for the first time, that my results are not typical. You know, that's what I'm going to say. And there's no guarantee that you'll find success as a trader, that you'll uh, find success whether you learn from me or you trade on your own, because trading is risky. But I share this with you because I want you to understand that there's a, a, a method to the madness. There's a reason why I'm focusing on trading during these times of day in the morning and avoiding afternoon stuff. There's a reason I avoid stocks of certain price ranges. It's because I have the data that is guiding those decisions. And so some of you guys, you know, for what it's worth, are trading without that type of data. So you're doing a little bit of shooting from the hip. You're just kind of doing some guesswork of, oh, this is kind of what I think other people are doing or what other people, you know, find success with, so I'll do that. And, and that may not be working for you. Or maybe it is, but you might not even really know what, what is working and what's not working. So I, I would definitely encourage you to... Um, you know, to focus on trying to get yourself dialed in with some metrics that support your strategy. Um, because it just doesn't make sense, in my opinion, to be shooting from the hip with real money if you don't really know what you're doing. So anyways, that's, you know, just just my my two cents to do, do whatever you prefer. Okay, so, um, so looking back at last week, um, we didn't have, uh, you know, the last 90 days have been pretty good, but these last like two weeks, I had a couple of bigger red days, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000. Uh, I was up 12,000 or 11,000 something yesterday, but finished up only 3,800. So I did give back a little bit of profit off the top, which was, um, you know, kind of a bummer because it was my, well, 10,000, 12,000 is a pretty solid day, uh, but I gave back a little. So I'm, I'm kind of churning right now. I'm down like 10,000 off my high in the last 90 days. Although, um, this is my high of all time. I'm not in a drawdown other than just this small drawdown here. So what I'm looking for, obviously, for the week ahead is to see if we have some continuation on, um, you know, these Chinese stocks that were so strong uh, this week. We had um, STNG, SNTG, sorry, on Friday. This one, I had a couple of really good trades on, and then I gave back all my profit on it, and I actually went red on it. Super, super choppy. So first of all, look at this sell-off pre-market. I didn't really see that coming. It went from 580 all the way down to 420. No news. It just sold off. It bounced. It sold off again. Popped up. It halts down at the open. Then it halts up. Goes a little higher. Then it sells off. It halts up. It goes up again, and what I did is I bought this dip right here because I was looking for the break through this pre-market high. It's a little aggressive, uh, and I ended up getting caught in a halt down and stopping out down here and losing 6000 on that trade. I went from up four grand on SNTG to down two grand on it, and that's when I went from up 12000 or so on the day to up uh, only 3800 4000 And I tried to remind myself, listen, don't say only 3800 3,800 is a great day. Be grateful for it because if you're not grateful for it, you're going to give that right back in a heartbeat. So, you know, I I, I tried to be grateful for it and, and kept that 3,800 in my pocket. So whatever, that's fine. Small green day. Daily goal is 5,000. Um, and I, I base that daily goal, you know, generally speaking on how I've been trading in the last, um, you know, well, this year. So my average is 7,400 a day. Uh, that's of all time. My average this year has been about 5,000 a day. I'm a little below average. So, you know, that that's okay. But that's where I'm at right now. So SNTG, this one is a little bit of a wild one. SATX, I took a loss on this one on Friday also. Um, 
it popped up ended up going up to a high of 16 but was choppy had a big move a couple days ago it was a recent SPAC so this is one that um, fits into the setup I was uh, telling you about just a second ago on uh, special acquisition companies so this is I mean we have traded this setup so many times the SPACs this this section of the momentum class is about identifying different daily setups that are really juicy. Recent IPO, recent reverse splits, blue sky setup, SPACs, gap down reversals, second day continuation, intraday parabolic squeezes, low volume parabolic momentum. Some of you guys have seen these. Some of these can be absolutely crazy. And you know, that's really what HKD was. Um, so HKD was low volume parabolic momentum. So if we, um, if we look at HKD real quick, HKD here, this is one that uh, went totally crazy all the way up to $2,600 a share. And, you know, I think that that's what obviously gave China stocks a big boost in August and September. So HUDI, does it have the potential to keep going? I don't see why it doesn't. I don't know that it will. But at the same time, given what we've seen from some of these other Chinese names, I'm not counting it out yet. All right. And if that starts going and shows some real strength, then I'm just going to be looking for sympathy and momentum and trying to get on aggress aggressive on whatever pops up that um, you know seems uh, similarly strong. So you know that's kind of that's kind of my thought process. And um, you know again, it's it's to each their own. You, you got to trade it as you see fit. You know you've got to take the setups that make sense for you. But this is my this is my approach on it. If it's hot, I'm going to trade it. I'm going to try to ride the momentum and look for um, look for continuation. All right. So um, so that's HUDI and the possibility of seeing more uh, Chinese stocks going into uh, the week ahead. I think that's got to be the approach. So Monday morning when I sit down, I'm going to be looking at the gap scanner. I'll certainly be watching HUDI. I'll be looking for some more opportunities. Um, you know, see what's strong, what's moving, and um, you know, try to add add some more profits um, to the month and get the week off to a good start, right? So, um, you know, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking for the week ahead. That's my game plan. We had some good action this past week. Oh, also we had PKBO on Friday. PKBO, this one, um, I called out super early, was really spot on with it. I didn't get a good entry. I uh, said it looked good when it was at 516. And then it rips up to eight. I got in in the middle of this candle, chased a little bit, made like 4,000 on it. It sells off and then it came ripping back through VWAP right here for another really nice move. So we definitely got some, um, some great, great setups there on uh, PKBO. And I want to keep those uh, on watch, um, those types of stocks on watch for the week ahead. So PKBO, we'll get this daily chart. It's a recent special acquisition company, pops up, sells off, and then starts to go. That's the same as PGY, very similar setup, right? Special acquisition company, sells off, and then starts to squeeze as it goes higher. So you guys know my plan uh, for the week ahead. I'll be um, trading as always um, for members in the chat room. So I'll be streaming uh, right here. Those of you guys that um, want to join us, you're welcome to join, but I'll also stream the morning show on YouTube. I try to put out a lot of free content, and I can tell you right now, for those of you guys tuning in on YouTube, there is a surplus of information out there on trading. I mean, there is a tremendous amount of information out there, more than any one person could possibly consume. So your job as someone out there that wants to learn about trading is to try to figure out how you're going to filter all this information to only let yourself consume what is really going to help you and support you in your learning. My strategy is not for everyone. The way I trade is not for everyone. The tools I use are not for everyone. But if you feel like the way I trade, the way I teach relates to you and is similar to what you're looking at and looking for in the market, then, hey, I, I'm happy to teach you. And you know, what I've done through my curriculum is I've organized all of this information in a way that's easier for you to consume. So you don't have to try to, you know, find the needle in the haystack by just going through 
tons of content on social media and trying to figure out what's credible, what's not credible, what's contradicting itself. Because there's a lot of different pieces of information. And you can have someone out there that is going to have very, um, you know, they're going to have an opinion that's going to contradict um, my opinion. And maybe that's valid if they're a profitable trader and they have a strategy that works and maybe that's going to work for you. But if they're not profitable, then it's just noise. So, you know, you got to make your own decision. Um, I do have this content organized in a great way and our members love it. It's not free. And, you know, that's the way it is. So you're welcome to be a member of the community. We are a members only community over at Warrior. Uh, but if you don't want to, that's fine too. A lot of our members uh, right now continue their membership because they value the educational tools, the chat room, the simulator, the scanners, and charts coming soon. So that is probably um, an equal, if not greater value to the classes. And as you guys know, we're changing our um, our membership structure. Uh, we'll, we'll be releasing the new, uh, the new lineup. I think it'll be next week. So we're changing our pricing. Uh, so you'll see that, but it's um, the new pricing is a one-time membership fee and we'll have three different tiers of membership. So it's a one-time membership fee that'll give you access to the classes. And the prices on the membership fees are going to be a little different than what they are now. And then members can subscribe to whatever tools they want. So if you want the chat room, you can subscribe to the chat room. If you want the scanners, you can subscribe to the scanners. If you don't want any tools, you don't have to subscribe to anything. You can just be a member and have access to the classes. So we're trying to make it a little bit easier there with a one-time membership fee uh, to the community and then just paying for the tools that you use, the market data, etc. Uh, and... For those that uh, for those that understand, obviously, this for me is a tremendous amount of cost to maintain this system, uh, this software, and everything else that we've built out. We've got a fantastic development team that has been working really hard. They're, we're working on building out charts, so charts are what are um, coming next for our members. Uh, so we've got the scanners, we've got charts, we've got our simulator, and you know, through all of that, you know, the amount of money that I pay and uh, market data fees and then Amazon server fees. It is astronomical. It's huge. So, you know, this stuff isn't free. And if it was free, that would be a very different story if, if it cost me nothing to provide it. But I would probably need to duplicate myself about 20 times, 30 times, uh, have, you know, 30 clones. And some of those clones would need to be really, really good developers and really, really good at IT because I just couldn't possibly do everything myself. And even if I did, then, you know, what do you value your time at? So the choice is obviously yours, whether you want to trade on your own or trade with a community. And listen, I have no problem with you guys consuming as much of my YouTube content as you want. I put lots and lots of stuff out there on YouTube. I want you guys to enjoy it. I want you guys to learn. But uh, at the same time, we're talking about day trading. And so everything that goes out on YouTube becomes uh, sort of, you know, it's it's past tense, immediate, basically instantly, right? So that's the value of being in the community where you have access to the tools, the ultra low latency broadcast, because day trading is right now, what's moving right now. So when it comes to actually trading, that's when I think it's really helpful to have the right tools and have the community. But, you know, study as much as you want, watch all that YouTube content, you may get to a point where you realize, uh, I'm missing a few pieces of the puzzle, and those are probably pieces that are uh, somewhere within this curriculum that I've built out. Uh, the, Warrior, uh, uh, the Warrior Pro membership that will include day trading, strategies, and scaling, this is 76 hours of content right here. That's just for that class. If you go over to day trading the basics, which is uh, included in the Warrior Starter, that's 18 hours of content. So you could piece together a lot on YouTube. This episode right now is coming on like 17 or 18 minutes. But, you know, it, there's only so much that you can do. And one of the things that I absolutely try to do is send the ladder back down. And I've done that by creating this content, by organizing this content. And I've done it by having a development team build out the scanners and the software that I use every single day. Because those are what give me my edge. And I share that edge with all of our members. So you guys have access to the same tools that I'm using. 
All right, so uh, thank you guys as always for tuning in. We've got a little bit of a game plan for the week ahead. I hope that we see some continuation of China stock momentum. It seems like we may, so I'm uh, I'm getting excited, and uh, let's see if we can make November a really fantastic month. So that's the game plan for the week ahead. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for hitting the thumbs up. Feel free to leave comments. I'll come back and answer them throughout the weekend. I'll see you guys back at it on Monday morning. All right, see you on Monday.